Are you serious? Hello. There are plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Right now, you are killing some time with I, Marcus Bronzy. And me, Funk Butcher. Yes. How are you doing? How are you doing with your fine ass self? Are you listening to us with headphones on like a train going somewhere? Are you listening to us in a car? Are you just walking down the street? Glad that you don't have to listen to the outside world because we are here killing some time with you. I thought you were talking to me about fine ass. I said, hey, <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, that's why you were there posing, yeah. voguing as I said it. My right. name's Marcus Bronzy. And I'm Funk Butcher. And there are many ways to kill some time out there. Right now, you are killing some time with us. Yes, you are. We have a website where you can see pretty much everything we talk about, previous episodes and such. There's loads more. It is howtokillanhour.com. Yes, indeed. And you can get involved. You can say hi to us via the website or via our various social media outlets. Pretty much go on any social media how to kill an hour. Type that in and you will find us. Uh, uh, you can say hi like people like Padcaster, Two Niles, the unicorn lover who said that Uber drivers around here don't like to talk to me or play music. So she plays a herb, uh, she plays how to kill an hour very loudly. So, uh, yo, uh, Uber driver, I want you to give unicorn lover a five star right now <laughs> and she will give you a five star back. Uh, hello to the 90s baby show. Oh, we saw you the other day. We'll speak about that in a second. Uh, M.M. Nesta, Alexander Adesan, Unedited Podcast and The Triggered Podcast. Hello yeah. to you, man. Yes, yes, shouts to you guys. Hello also to Off The Cuff Podcast. Saw you guys. Sassy Tees, Mostly Lit, Ground Ego. Trinity Taylor, who was at the live show and said that we were funny as hell. Not heaven, funny as hell. Mm. That's, that's devilishly funny. Yeah, I mean, Trinity, you were quite funny. We should talk about Trinity in a second, actually. Yeah. Trinity, you you brought some vibes. Anyway, yeah. Shouts also to Romper Baby, Artistic State of Mind, M.M. Nesta, Distinguished Diva, Daniel Scott. That's right. Hello to all of you. So we saw a lot of people that, that we gave shout outs to at Shout Out Live, didn't we? Yeah. Which we've just come back from a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. It was an event in London, a podcast festival, one of the, the the most dynamic podcast festivals out there, the most diverse mm-hmm. podcast festival the UK has ever had, headlined by the Brilliant Idiots, the Friend Zone, and the Melanin Millennials. Also had a great bunch of other podcasts down there, like Mostly Lit, Another mm-hmm. Round, mm-hmm. Black Ticulate, Nineteen's Baby, the Pink Matter podcast, mm-hmm. Artistic States of Mind, the Unoriginal podcast, Off the Cuff, Ground Ego, Seriously? Uh, yeah and loads of people down there i mean i just had fun mm-hmm. didn't, didn't we have fun when we went down there i had more than fun what was what, what what's more than fun funk <laughs> <laughs> when you chuck an extra letter one oh, i had fun k yeah, fun k i had some fun all right k funky funky so we had fun there uh it was myself you and nick bright yep headed over to bedford way which is kind of like a classic establishment for lectures and stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like Bedford Way has got a bunch of lecture halls that Stephen Hawkins has definitely spoken. And when I say spoken, I don't mean him speaking. Obviously, he plays presses play on his computer, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. he like speaks to people. I feel like we're in that sort of very established educational environment. Yeah, and it was very fun to bring our very uneducated, unestablished. <laughs> behavior into that building well the building is owned by was it university college london That's which right. is um a very esteemed establishment yep. i think it's part of the whole university of london um collective yeah uh, which includes imperial um king's college yeah. and such but it's the uk version of the ivy league university so we yeah. had the the privilege yeah. to be in a very um an esteemed yeah surroundings and it was good to talk about fucking goats in an environment like yes. that. Yes, yes. Um, and that is... We went to esteemed surroundings and talked about fucking goats. We talked about bestiality. That's, that's what you did. yeah. We got, we got our bestiality on. <laughs> and it was great, man. And, and I don't want to sell too much about it because I'm waiting on the recordings mm-hmm. being sent to us so that we can possibly put that out yeah. as a live show so you can hear what went down. But we had a great time and, and our live show, which... Um, I mean, after doing that, I don't know why we're not going to do some more right away. So yeah. me, me, Funk and Nick are like, we should do some more yeah. like, real soon. So we're mm-hmm. going to, you know, hold tight. Something's going to happen. Um, but I think our format of live show was quite different to what most would expect from a live show. Mm-hmm. It was it was very how to kill an hour. Yeah. But we also adapted it so that the audience had a great time. I like the fact that we had people that 
were like not even meant to be like getting involved in the podcast. Like there were stalls and stuff around that were getting involved. Yeah. Uh, hands up. Hey, come on, I want to get involved. Yeah. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. It was really, really good. And um, very immersive. It was an immersive podcast. We use tech because we mm-hmm. are techie guys, mm-hmm. but we kept it nice and simple as well. It wasn't like, it wasn't boring tech, was it? No. Anyone could get involved. There were some very out there uh, responses from the crowd, including Trinity. She had a lot to say. Yeah. Trinity had a lot to say. Yeah. She was, um, she she almost she was a blabbermouth. She no, almost, I'm joking. <laughs> Shout out to Trinity. <laughs> she was she almost needed a seat on the stage. Yeah, she almost needed a seat on the stage, which she took. Yeah, she did. She did take that. She took my seat. She <laughs> oh, great! Uh, and yeah, it was just great getting involved with all the other podcasters. So hold tight, How to Kill an Hour. We're definitely going to be doing more live mm-hmm. shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you want us to come to your town, just hit us up on Twitter or hit us up on the social media. Let us know where you want us to come and play. Mm-hmm. Um. After that, we saw the other podcasts that were down there. We get to, got, got to catch the Brilliant Idiots live. Yeah. I have to say, did not disappoint. No, not at all. Did not disappoint. Absolutely smashed it. Some of the questions, though, I feel like I feel like there were some people that were getting away with when they do, they do this thing called Ask an Idiot, where they ask the audience, yeah. audi- audience gets to ask questions. That's their version of Q&A, yeah. Their version of Q&A. I think the only problem with that for me was some people were Mike Hogging. Mm-hmm. Some people getting away with like three questions. And I was yeah. like, no, nah, I wanted to hear a more of a range of questions. Because yeah. some people were trying to counter question your question. Yeah. Like, you know, on Question Time, yeah. a very famous UK show that's been around for many years. Mm-hmm. People come and it's question mm-hmm. time. They get mm-hmm. one question yeah. and they fuck off. Yeah. yeah. But the question Singular, can, not yeah, plural. Yeah. And sometimes it can be a bit long. Like, you know, as I know, when I grew up in this area, you can get, you can get freaky with it. You yeah. can, you know, yeah. give a bit of backstory to your question. Yeah. But... Some people were like asking a question, then like trying to change their. No, I didn't mean that. I mean, yeah. I was, nah, yeah. man, you get your question. Yeah, yeah. But I think some pe- some people purposely they kind of they put the PVA glue on their hand just as the microphone arrived there, and mm. then it yeah. was there. It was stuck. Yeah, they had that Velociraptor grip on that yeah. microphone, and they had to use the crowbar. They had to call security. Yeah, they had to uh, um, use the CS gas to release that yeah, microphone. Man. It wasn't happening, man. Yeah, man. They yeah. were. They were hell bent on getting that twenty five questions in. You needed some adamantium claws to remove those hands from the mic. It was ridiculous, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. But um, other than that, I think it was great. Yeah, I think it was great. And and the brilliant idiots definitely were brilliant. Mm-hmm. Definitely were idiotic as well. You can find out more about that all at howtokillanhour.com. Andrew com. Schultz goes in. He goes in though. What's doesn't he going to get to get Somalis, man? Nah, see now you're now you're saying it like that. <laughs> you have to go and and check the show. You need the, the to check the audio because that. Come on. <laughs> that that one line that that Andrew Schultz um, let off, it, it brought down the whole room. There were some heart stoppers. In yeah, there. shouts to my East Africans out there. There were some it's, heart stoppers. It, it's all love, baby. There I, some I know about stoppers. the banana and rice. Yes. Yeah, I'm not down with that. Though. Are you down with it? Nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not down with it. banana and rice. Banana and rice, for those that don't know, is um, Somali dish. Yeah. yeah. And when I used to work around here, actually yeah. in Northwest London, acting, a friend of mine, mm. Isaac, he showed me about um, what I thought was uncooked plantain yeah and rice with his mouth what are you doing you know you're supposed to cook that he's like no man no brother this is banana and rice and was it nice it was actually nice did it require any sugar and spice banana and rice is very nice did you requires have requires no sugar and spice did you have it more than twice no I had it thrice <laughs> hey <laughs> <laughs> booyah <laughs> is it nice though yeah it's alright you know it's very, very sweet. I think it's the combination of something so sweet with um, your regular meal. It's, you have it cold like a normal banana temperature. <laughs> so, okay. Is, yeah. yeah, I was going to ask next. Is it heated? No. You have it's the not. rice cold and the banana cold? No, yeah, no. The, the rice is warm, normal, like boiling hot, whatever. Yeah. And the banana's cold. I'm up for trying it. Yeah. I've never tried it before. Maybe we should try it. It doesn't sound too good for yeah. me. You know, interesting. Bees, bees are going to be like I'm crazy, but yeah. What I find funny is I've never heard a black person mistake <laughs> banana for plantain, but I've heard many white people say, oh, why have you got those bananas? Those big bananas in the corner. Why are you frying those bananas? I'm like, no, it's plantain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those, never heard of Those before. giant bananas. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had some dried ones that were like crisps in the car. <laughs> And me and Billy were driving somewhere and he opened the glove box. He goes, oh, you, you, got, you got some bananas in there. I was like, no, the plantain, the plantain. I didn't let you try one though, did I, Bill? They're quite nice, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Billy's like, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 
He's like, nah, mate, I don't like them. I don't like my bananas all looking like that, mate. <laughs> Billy's like, yeah, I'm sure shit's nice to some people as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, Plantain is absolutely delicious. Billy's got a new chat up line. Was it? Are you happy to see me? Or is that a plantain in your pocket? Oh, <laughs> there you go. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, Billy, if, if, you, if you ever see a nice black girl that you want to move to, yeah, and you're in a club, yeah. That'll get you right in yes, there. Yeah, and then you follow it up with, do you like pounded yams? I could pound yours. Yeah. <laughs> so babe, babe, you look like a you look like a yam and I will pound you. Yeah. Yeah. We want a fifty percent split when you do that Af- African chat up line yeah. book from Amazon. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to get a hundred percent split, Billy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Kindle ebook hype. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh how have I been killing some time? I did something that was slightly more for younger people actually. Okay. Uh but it was designed for them, but I feel like it's also accessible for adults. I went to the NEC in Birmingham for my first ever time traveling experience. Where did you go? I went back to the Cretaceous period, sixty seven million years ago. Where did you go, Marty? I went <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know, Rick. <laughs> um I went 67 million years back in time mm-hmm. to go and try a dinosaur time travel experience called Dinosaurs in the Wild. Their time, their world, your adventure. I'm happy you said that. Cretaceous period. Not Jurassic. Like nah. Jurassic Park always gets it wrong. Nah. There were no dinosaurs in the Jurassic period. Exactly. It's the Cretaceous. I take it to the Cretaceous. Yeah. You get me? Where things were a bit more spacious. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no more Asia's words. What do I say? I think that line was quite bodacious. My 33, oh, no. like my thirty-three ten. It had many faces. No, <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Billy, could you hear this? Of course. <laughs> how, oh. to, how to kill a vocabulary in an hour? Oh man, that was absolutely <laughs> crazy. Right. Um. So you, they take you back in time. Okay. But basically, it's it's like a multi. It uses multiple ways to throw your experience mm-hmm. so i'm going to get into those but firstly it's by the guy that was behind was it walking with dinosaurs the show wasn't it yeah so that show walking with dinosaurs in the uk which is very is a bbc show but mm-hmm. i think it's been broadcast worldwide mm-hmm. which was like a natural history show but you got to watch dinosaurs mm. in a much more natural environment because yeah. jurassic park it was kind of there was only one purpose for these dinosaurs and that was to kill people and move the story along. Whereas you kind of get to learn about dinosaurs a bit yeah, more. Yeah. So he's kind of taken this to another level with dinosaurs in the wild. So you get in a time capsule, mm-hmm. travel back in time, and through a combination of like VR, AR, live step, set moving, um, live set like changes. Uh, what's the stuff they use? Animatronics. Okay. And like all these other immersive mm-hmm. things, they make you feel like you have gone back in time to a laboratory where you actually get to explore the physical aspects of dinosaurs. Uh, so there's like, you can do things like touch dinosaur poo. Mm. Yeah, you can do things. Yeah, no, it's a bit Ooh, weird. I enjoy lovely. It. No, I love that. I mean, I love me a bit of scat. So, <laughs> so you get to do things like touch dinosaur poo, see actual bits of dinosaur that look really realistic. Yeah. I went down there. It's like a 90, 90 minute thing. Pop down there. And I had a really good experience, man. I just felt like it wasn't, I felt like, yes, it works for kids, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, if you're over the age of 16, cover your ears right now, it's not real. But <laughs> you kind of just release your inner kid and get involved in it. And mm. like, you know, things might not go to plan when you're in there. And okay. if they do, you kind of have to react to that. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah, yeah. And it was just nice being an experience where you kind of just find out a bit more about dinosaurs. Like, I didn't know dinosaurs, you know the dinosaurs we saw in Jurassic Park? Yeah. They didn't have any hair. They, they didn't have any hair, did they? Like a lot of them were just like reptiles. No, I think one of them had an afro. Oh, the one that goes, <laughs> <laughs> and one had a high top, yeah? <laughs> but like some of them had like dinosaurs that we thought didn't have hair. Some of them have got like feathers and hair, much more than oh, we thought. Oh, okay, yeah. And they're much more colourful. So I learned that. Well, that makes sense because they're supposed to be like. In between chicken and, yeah, and lizard. Chicken and lizard, yeah. Some of them did look like they Ch- could make chizzard. a good Ch- Nando's. Chizzard. Though. Yeah, chizzard. Mm. I basically headed down there. That was nice. If something for you to do with the family, check out howtokillanhour.com is where you can check out more about walking with dinosaurs. Uh, Funk, have you ever gone shopping with a girl? Mm-hmm. Many a time. <clears throat> what the fuck Yeah. do it's... they do with the time? When I go shopping, I don't understand how someone can spend so long <coughs> buying things, Yeah. trying them on, taking them off. And buying other things. I feel like 
as a man, well, you know, well, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm, I'm a big fan of like the same type of top. Yeah. Like I'll go and buy seven tops in the same size. Yeah. And that's me, I'm done. And, and if the, I have to get more, I'll get them online. And the feminists are going to kill me out there because that is what it is. Men are more clinical in their decision making. 100%. I go online, I see the, the image of the garment that mm -hmm. I want, I go to the store and yeah. I'm in and out. I'm like yeah. um, Jack Bauer. Yeah. Like I will go to houseology.com, find the size of houseology t-shirt that I like to wear. I'm like Excel, try it on once. Oh, that's nice. I'll have four more. Oh, they're sold out because they're limited edition. That's what will happen to me. <laughs> But I'll, but I'll buy the same top again and again and again. That's literally what I'm like. I won't be the kind of guy that's like, oh, I wonder what it'll be like if I... Nah. I'm like, short sleeve in the, in the summer, long sleeve in the winter. Women take no! I think that is, it is sexist, yeah, but I think women definitely take longer shopping than men, 100%. Yeah. 100 or 90% of women take longer shopping. Do you know shopping. what they should do also a study on? The amount women pay on parking, because it must be much more than parking. Because you're taking so long in the store, you must pay, pay much yes. more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. On the meter. Yeah. Very interesting. But anyway, according to the paper mall in Shanghai, yeah, they have the solution. Okay. They have set up storage pods for husbands that you women mm -hmm. can leave us men in when you go shopping. So you take us along, mm -hmm. you park up the car, you drop us off in a little pod, you go and have a little <laughs> shop and you come back and collect us and we've got a little grin on our face because we've had a fun time in the pod playing 90s retro games. Yeah, on a nice little computer gamepad, sitting on a relaxing chair, maybe having a soft drink and relaxing. I think this is a well overdue idea. What are your thoughts on this, Funk? It's like a crash for husbands. Yes, it is crash. <laughs> and, I, and I would be happy. You should see, you would, the smile on my face as I walk over to this little pod. Yeah. It's like this, they, they look like black little pods. They look yeah. like little arcades. <clears throat> The smile on my face. Like if, if I knew these existed in my local shopping centre yeah. and my missus was like, we're going to go shopping, I'd be like, oh, can I go in the pod, please? Can I? Can I? And she, if she said, yeah, I'd be like, yes. They've, and can we get a McDonald's after? Yeah? Chicken nuggets, yeah? Yes. Down for it, man. It's got a very exposed feel to it. I mean, mm. it's a it's a glass cabinet, basically. Yeah, yeah. And everyone can walk past and look at you. And, uh -huh. I don't know about the looking in. Yeah, maybe yeah. I want mine to have one-way glass. I want a yeah. bit of privacy. Or oh, we need curtains. Curtains, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind curtains, curtains or a bit of one-way glass so that I feel like I'm in my zone because I don't want kids running up at the glass, smashing it while I'm on COD trying to get rid of my 20 kill streak yeah. on COD cause, or messing me up at FIFA. Mm -hmm. I'm about to score an, an 89th minute goal and a kid comes along and runs into the glass and disturbs me. <laughs> I might have to, you know, get out the booth and, you know, have a word. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wonder if there's a possibility that you can actually hold the key to it as well so that when your wife comes to get you, you can just lock it from the inside. It's like, no, go on, take a bit more time. Have a bit more time shopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro probably, probably. What would be the the polar opposite equivalent of this then? It would be a, a store which consists of a little booth where a man sits in and then he locks his girl in a shopping centre <laughs> for, for an hour. So basically just push all the women yeah. in your life, in the world, into a Westfield. Yeah, that's it. That's a Westfield one of the biggest shopping centers in the UK. Yeah. That would, it would smash it there. Yeah. Do you think this is a feasible thing to have? Like husband pods? Um, yeah. Because if you see some of the looks on the men at Westfield, <laughs> they look like they are going through a life sentence. The look of despair. We've all seen it. It starts, if you look at them from the foot up, you, yeah. you see, you just see tired feet. You just see feet that are sat, and then you see you see bags, don't you? Yeah. Bags on the left, bags on the right, held by these big manly hands. Yeah. And then you see like sunken shoulders. There was one time depressed. I went. I went one time I went Westfield. Yeah. And I made the 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 schoolboy ever <sighs> schoolboy school ever schoolboy mistake of doing my Christmas shopping at Westfield. Westfield is the biggest shopping center in Europe. Actually, <clears throat> it's absolutely huge. And um, I was sitting down once, and this guy slipped me a note yeah. he was with his wife he slipped yeah. me a note yeah. he was so petrified he slipped me a note the note said help me help me help me help me and what did he did he write in blood or something like that because I know he, I know he didn't have a pen he, I know he didn't have a pen did he write in blood or or, or, or did he yeah he used his own blood yeah or did he help use a, a, a drop of blood and smudged it with his tears it was like get out <laughs> save yourself while you can <laughs> fuck that yeah I it hate is, shopping. It is a traumatic experience. Yeah. I hate shopping. Uh, for me, I'm online as much as possible, man. Yeah. Like, if you had a choice to buy something, 
I mean, this is the great thing about not having any more puberty in my life until I get old and do the reverse <laughs> of puberty where I shrink. I know what I know what size I am. Yeah. I can step on the scales and be like, yeah, that will fit my waist. That won't. Yeah. And that's the greatest thing. No, but the women know what size they are. But for some reason, they want to try every single size and every single colour. And but I think I think when you shop that much between shops, there's lots of di- like with dresses and just stuff. In I case, know like a dress in one shop can be a different size to a dress no, in another shop. No, but just in case they lost weight from mm. walking from the car to the shop, they want to try on various <laughs> other s- <laughs> Just in case. Yeah, this could happen. But wait, basically, I want these to come to the UK. These need to come to the UK. Pods. In fact, why don't we should we should should we commission these? I don't think we've got enough floor space. Yeah, that's literally, that's literally every husband in there. Yeah, the husbands will be fighting. Yeah. No, I want to play Sonic. Yeah, let me in there. Fair enough. Oh, actually, it got me, it got me thinking. You know, right? Um, there's this game funk, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna play the music from it, and I want you to tell me when you think this game came out. Yeah. Okay. What 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 year? Yeah, just okay. around. Uh, you, don't, you, don't have to be, you don't have to be super accurate. Okay, just cool. around what time? Yeah. Ready for this? I like it. Yeah? Ah, I don't know why I want to spit bars. <laughs> I have no bars. Wait for the drop. <laughs> huh. So yeah, around what year would you place this tune? Um, This game. I don't know. 2001 on Rinse FM. <laughs> when the reception wasn't very good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when you're in the barbershop. This sounds like grime music mixed with that that little bleeper noise. Sounds like the, the, the private caller. Yeah. Trying to ring in. Um, exactly. Inside tonight. We've got a whole lot of tunes coming up. Uh, uh, inside. Inside. Sounds of the Bronzy. And the Funk Butcher. Cha, 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 cha. Yeah, what echo Here we out? Go. Uh, 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 so this tune, yeah, it shocked me when I found out when this tune came out. I know what this tune is, though. It's from, should I tell you what the tune it is? Go, go on. It's, uh, it's a Marvel game, isn't it? It's, um, they were talking about this tune, they're saying it is arguably the first grime tune. Yeah. It's a Wolverine game, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is indeed yeah. a Wolverine game. It is. What year is it though? 1994. Really? Wolverine, Adamantium Rage. It's boss, the second boss music. And the guy that produced it is a, from a crew called Ru- Rude and Deadly who made Jungle at the time, but apparently he produced the, 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 gay, the gay music. His name's Dylan Bill. And that that has to be... The grimiest tune before grime I've ever heard. So that guy who produced the music, what country was he from though? UK. Okay, so we can still say grime is UK music. Oh wait, shut up. I'm presuming. Oh my gosh, should I double check? <laughs> Could you oh, imagine? What if he's not? Oh no, let's just, let's just hope it's not American. So we culturally <clears throat> appropriated it from <laughs> the appropriations. I invented grime in 94, so I've just found out. Let's find out where he is. <sighs> Epsom, Southeast. Phew. <sighs> Phew. Okay, it's still ours. <sighs> Calm down, people. But yeah, so that sounds very, very grimy. Mm. Very, very grimy. I have a feeling as well that games like that had the best kind of music. Mm-hmm. That sort of, what was your favourite kind of retro, retro music when you were gaming back in the day? Oh gosh, talking soundtracks from Ridge Racer, um, obviously Street Fighter soundtrack. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of um, Amiga. Do you know what I was listening to the other day? I was listening to the official soundtrack for a fighting game called Killer Instinct. Yeah. And <clears throat> that was the first game. I remember when it came out on the Super Nintendo, it had they gave away the official soundtrack with the game. Really? Like, like a CD with all the... And have you still got that? The stages. Yeah, it's scratched now and everything. Yeah. 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 But it was in the, yeah, some really cool sounds in there. Bro, I don't know if anything's cooler than that though, you know. What, the Adamantium Rage boss level? That is... A, I don't dun, know. Dun, 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 dun. The, it's like the bass in it. <laughs> the bass in it. Doom, 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 doom. I think mine was Streets of Rage had some hot music in it. Yeah. Streets of Rage. Oof. Oof. Streets of Rage had some hot music. Like it, it, it made me want to rave before I knew what raving was. It just shows you that nothing is ever. What's this? Is, Streets of Rage. It's basically techno. <laughs> what? <laughs> EDM of Rage. Yeah, bruv, they were sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's. <laughs> 
Marcus is taking off his shirt and using his glow sticks. <laughs> is that from Streets of Rage? Yeah. Sounds like we're in Sonic now. Bro, Sonic was pretty good. And there was some pretty... Okay, we're, we're in Cuba. On the Copacabana. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so Grime. 2000, uh, 1994. Interesting. So can we count that as the first Grime tune? I think we have to. Because it is... I mean, if it didn't... Someone, if it didn't influence Someone was telling Porky's in the history books about their influences. They clearly it, must have heard that. So do we... So so <coughs> so that is it. 95, 1994. Grime was Grime. Yeah. In 94. So this guy, Dylan, he made Grime. Yeah. Fact. All right. Moving on. Uh, do you believe the news funk? No. You know I'm super sceptical. No. You know I'm like a news commander. Billy, no. out loud, do you believe the news? Yes. R- really? You believe what you read and then think about it afterwards? Because I always read and I'm like, nah, nah, nah. nah Actually, nah, in, in Billy's defence, yeah, it depends where the news is coming from, I guess. So yes and no. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like, nah. And I feel like I will... What, no with everything? I'm always like, no, and then I have to try and source it. And then I realise if all my sources come from the internet and I'm not actually there, I don't really know what to trust. I'm okay. very sceptical, very sceptical about sensationalised news because okay. there's a lot of stuff that's out there that people say and I'm like, hmm. But is all news sensationalised? If it's in The Guardian, BBC. <laughs> yeah. Kill him. Yeah, Tell him, Billy. Billy said, Guardian or BBC, yeah. he's down, he trusts it. Oh, you trust it? Yeah. Oh. See? You can't, uh, it's the reverse for me. Yeah. Guardian I mean, is not one of the most solid journalistic people you can... There's always a bit of a political bias from those kind of establishments, though. So I'd say you're probably going to better get a better deal from the smaller institutions, the smaller, more independent ones. Yeah. They've, got, they've got less of a vested interest. I feel like to bo- lie. boring local news is probably more realistic. Like, the council have agreed to put more speed bumps on the high road <laughs> and some extra signs up. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I can believe that. Yeah. Or library closing. Yeah. I can believe that. But when it's like, <clears throat> for example, remember when they told us to, to say that guy, when they told us that that guy Marcus that saved the NHS from getting attacked was a hero. And he was like, oh, I really don't want any any sort of uh, press or any extra attention. And it actually, re- it actually came across that this guy that saved the NHS from getting this ransomware attack from this virus that was basically saying hand over you know trillions of dollars or pounds yeah. or we're going to lock all of the NHS yeah. and the NHS was reduced <clears throat> to using pen and paper to sort out things like prescriptions yeah. and, and work their day to day functions this guy Marcus I forgot his surname yeah Bronzy Hutchins. Bronzy Hutch- <laughs> so what's his name Hutchins. Hutchins this guy Marcus Hutchins actually ended up being a wanted criminal public enemy number one for hacking one, and haven't they jetted one, him over to the one. states now or something yeah, he was yeah. already he was a, he was already in the states he was, he was already part, in the he states was part, he, was attend, yeah. he was attending a conference or like some sort of like I think it's a hacking conference or something like that or a security <laughs> he was at a hacking <laughs> Billy just said he was at a hacking conference <laughs> as he saved the a NHS a hacking conference or like a security firm type thing cyber security and then the FBI caught him because basically he was arrested for the software that was eventually used to hack the NHS. So he planted. So it. wait, he planted the software. Well, no, he he. If I if I if I'm reading it correctly, he sold the program that eventually was responsible for him. Getting so arrested. what a fucking g! He made the software, <laughs> sold it, and pretended to fix it. Yeah. Let me just let me just double check. This. So basically, I've, I read that. So basically, he led a paper trail. He took some fake tweets saying, "Oh, could I have the code to?" This so and so software, but really he was part of the development process. I, rec- I reckon he did it because they didn't pay up. I reckon that he's the people he sold the software to were like, we're going to give you half of the data that you get, <laughs> half of the day, half of the money that we get, we're going to give to you. And then when the money, co- co- money wasn't being coughed up by the NHS, he's like, now nah, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this. That noise just there was Marcus hacking us. That was I'm hacked. I've just hacked into your phone yeah. in your WhatsApps. No, that's Marcus Hutchins hacking us. That was yeah, oh my gosh, Marcus <laughs> Hutchins on us. Um. But yeah, that was, I mean, do you know what I mean? But um, fake news. So okay. they've, somebody has actually managed using a technique where they scan faces and scan Obama's face. They managed to model the shape of Barack Obama's mouth and they can use other audio and make it sound like Barack Obama 
make it look like Barack Obama is making a speech. That so is you, amazing, Michelle. So remember in like films, like where they'd be like, oh, that's computer generated video where you can make somebody look like they're saying something else. So now it's possible. I could get a picture of you. Funk. If I've got <clears> enough <throat> footage of you talking online, yeah, I can get other words, somebody doing a funk butcher impression. Yeah. Yeah. And make you look like you're saying something else. Mm-hmm. I have no faith in the news now, bro. Okay. Like you could, you could, so that means they can make fake footage now. I'm not just talking about guys jumping around in slow motion, pretending they're on the moon. I'm yeah. talking about like, you could have people saying stuff that they haven't said before. Isn't this sensationalism though? Because they've always had this technology. Have you seen some of the CGI films out there? Yes. They're, they yes. are practically human like anyway. Yes. So what we're saying is that someone is just using that technology and putting it in the news. Mm. Okay. But for films, they have a studio that they put people in, 3D scan their face, do it. Yeah. They've, they've not 3D scanned Obama. They've used stock footage. So what I'm, so the sensational, actual sensational thing about it is, is that if you're out there enough now yeah. and you make enough public speeches, yeah. they can take that data, mm-hmm. take that th- those facial patterns off the videos mm-hmm. and turn them into other things. So well, films is amazing. <clears throat> so like in, in, the, in Rogue One, yeah. they created a guy that doesn't exist. He's dead. Yeah. And they did the same with Paul Walker in Fast and Furious. Yeah. Sick. But now you can be made to look like you're saying absolutely anything. Well, I guess that's what the argument is. Because you are in the public eye yeah. that much, you don't need a 3D scan, yeah. Obama. There's yeah. so much footage. I mean, what, what he's, he was in the public eye for two terms, eight years, yeah. in every possible yeah. scenario, every possible yeah. situation. You don't need to put him in, the, behind the, uh, in front of a green screen and do the whole scanning yeah. process because there's literally footage from every single angle, from every single media source in the world. Um, so just add that to a good um, impressionist. You can do his voice and get him saying everything. Crazy. But you could do anyone. You could Michelle, do like Jimmy Fallon. I want some hard wings. Yeah. You could do like Jimmy <laughs> Fallon. Oh no, not another rapper on my show, man. I hate these. Like that. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, fuck yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Um, do you know what I forgot to do? Can we go back in time again? Like I did when I went to the Cretaceous period. Go on. We have leftover questions from the How to Kill a Li- Our Live show. Should we answer some of them? Should we do them? Yeah. Should we do some? Let's do it. Billy, would you like to do some? Can you take the pace of Nick Bright? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, Omar said, have you heard Khalid's last album? Have you? Is that the question? Yeah. Yes. Yes. No. Okay, moving on. Michelle said, <laughs> can we describe the perfect wife? Go on, you go, Billy. Let's uh, uh, let Billy lean in and uh, in places Nick Bright and and give us a little a little thing. What are really thinking about? What, what just how she is a person or physically or what? What are we doing? How about you give us like a five hundred word essay? Let's split it into three <laughs> sections. <laughs> one third is about her personality. One third is about uh, no, Billy, don't do her that. background, <laughs> and one third is about her physical attributes. Strength. Should I do it? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> um, right, okay, she's got banter. Babe, personality, banter. Yeah. Yep. Uh, she can like, argue a point. She's not like, it's not dumb. She's intelligent. Intelligent, Ooh. banter and intelligent. Um, okay, so they're the main two. <laughs> yeah, so that's personality out of the way. What's she the other can... section? Uh, it is... Looks. No, no, that's like physical attributes. Is that, uh, it, was, it was personality. Yeah. Uh, I forgot. Just do, just do, just personality. Okay, yeah, cool. Okay. Personality and tits. Uh, she's got a <laughs> tits ass. <laughs> um, so this week we could come really misogynistic right now. Um, you're the one holding up the sign saying, "Ask me about tits." <laughs> you got big booty and uh, like an hourglass type shape. Okay. An hourglass type shape. Okay, so personality. Thing. How about like her, her, her work aspirations and stuff? What kind of career would you like your perfect wife to have? Just someone, just, just someone who's successful in whatever they want to do. If they're passionate about something, if they're okay. success, successful in it, then yeah. Okay, cool. Fun? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you could just describe your partner now. Who? Yeah, I could, but I'm not. <laughs> I would say stay clear of Torians. Okay. <laughs> wow that's deep um i would say you didn't is that is that oh is that it yeah, yeah, that's it oh, that's cool. it yeah uh, if you do that you're fine i would say solange 
I'm sure that's Salon- what you pronounce. Salon- I'm, I'm, so, Sl- I'm, I'm, Sl- I'm absolutely Sl- positively Sl- sure Sl- you don't pronounce Beyonce's sister like Salonji. Sl- Sl- Salonji. 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 Exactly. Salonji. 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 Yeah. So you like Salonji, not the sister? Salonji. Yeah. Because. Salonji. Uh, whilst I do friend. respect somebody like Beyonce, <laughs> I do I do respect Beyonce and yeah. I think she's a, a beautiful lady. Yeah. Something turns me on about a woman that will slap up Jay Z, you know. <laughs> Come on, man. So you basically want a woman that knows Kung Fu? Mm. Okay. Mm. I think I just like the I like the strength. Ronda Rousey? Ooh, but she loses though. She's not very good I, at I it. I think in I think if they were in a lift, which is uh, the Knowles prime fighting environment, I think that yeah. Solange will beat Ronda Rousey. Yeah. You've in in a in a lift. You got in a far, lift. Man. That's her zone, man. She beat Jay Z in a lift. He had to he had to concede in the lift. He couldn't retaliate in the lift. In the octagon, you know, obviously we'll let Rousey take it. But in a lift, Nas could beat Jay Z in a lift though as well. Probably L- lyrically. Oh. <laughs> But we've um we've never we've never seen Rousey in a lift, and we've never seen Miss Knowles. No, nope. he's seen her in a f- kind of like an octagon shaped mm. lift, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Didn't, do, didn't fare too well in there. Didn't do very well. O said, "Oh, what a surprise that you didn't give us your full name." O, first time you got some head. Describe the the fourth of July. Is it Independence the 4th of July? Day? Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the first time I got some head. The first time. Where's these questions? Uh, you can think he's like, where are these questions coming from? They're the leftover questions from our no, from our live show. He doesn't trust me. You know the interesting f- fact about I'll the show, 4th I of July? I promise they're real questions, yeah. The UK version of the 4th of July is... Bonfire night. And Brexit that is... Day. My birthday. Yeah. Ooh. So, so the, <laughs> so Maybe the first, he was responsible the first, for it. first time you got ahead on your, was on your birthday. <laughs> so I remember the first time I got ahead. I, I walked into that one. I gotta be honest. I don't think I can remember the first time I got head. Sorry if you're the first person that gave me it. Can you remember the last oh, time yeah. you got it? Oh yeah, hell yeah, motherfucker. Yesterday. Uh, I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. I can't remember. I don't know. It was around the time when I was young, and I think, I think I got head on a bench in a park. Okay. One of the first times of legal age, though. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm not R. Kelly, bro. No, oh. you you was of legal age. Not the, oh, she my. weren't R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I, d- I don't remember the first time I got head. Okay, maybe I think maybe I got head in a park though, and I think I thought that was pretty cool because I like bunked off a lesson and got head, okay. and I came into a lesson and guys were like, "Where are you?" and I was like, ah, "I got head instead of being in sociology." Okay. <laughs> like, I don't it, know. Was, it wasn't no, nothing deep like you was homeless. That's why you was in the park. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It was just like, <laughs> "Where do we go?" Ain't going to my house. Ain't going to your house. Where's a place that we can link this in the middle? Head park. Park seems to be like a very commonplace um, uh, environment for sexual activity. It's always a park, isn't it? A park. I think the most open plan, like yeah, <laughs> area. You, bo- you both know where it is. You can both get to it. <laughs> I think yeah. I don't know why it was a park. It was a nice day though. Was there a tree obscure in your view? Did you go into the forest? I think we were like on the edge of a forest area, <laughs> and there was a guy that was walking like a dog. And I think I remember saying like, oh, "Hurry up." She's yeah. like, you hurry up. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I should hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't remember. Oh, sorry. I don't remember the first time I got some head. Yeah. It clearly wasn't that great. Um, I, but yeah, I don't know. Good head. I can give you some advice. Oh, is is sloppy for me. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. Is, is sloppy head. Uh, Omar said, do you like J. Cole? That's the same Omar that wrote DJ Khaled's, did you hear DJ Khaled's last album? Yes. Um... I'm on the fence, you know. I'm on the fence. He's not remarkable. Yes. Really? Yeah. 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 It's all right. Uh, who do you think would win? Puff Daddy said, who do you think would win? 10 duck-sized Jay-Zs or one Jay-Z-sized duck? Solange. There you go. Solange. They, my wifey. My wifey would handle that. Solange. Yeah. In a lift or out of a lift, she'd handle that. Simple. Um, team Natural or Team Makeup and Weave said no. That's what you look like to start with. Oh, oh, <laughs> did he I'm say? Oh, it. fuck. Did he say that? Stop that, Marcus. Team natural or team makeup and weave? Billy? Um, mm. A bit of both. Okay. <laughs> so what? which bit is, is what? 
You're so like, what? Half like... weave and half makeup? <laughs> you like natural makeup or enough makeup and not too much makeup, so you look like half you and could half. Like that. You could play so you want, you want so your girl to look, you want, face. You want your girl to, to look, look like Two Face, face from Batman. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Funk. <laughs> I just pictured that in my head. Two Face. Um, no, nah, natural man. Yeah, I don't like the. I don't like to be frightened in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Who are you? Yeah, man. I there's nothing better for me than a girl that has no makeup on, no hair done, pajamas. Because mm-hmm. if you can look good like that, mm-hmm. you can look good in anything. You get me? She came to the club wearing pajamas. Oh, look at that! An alarm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. No, I don't like meeting girls in the club. Anyway, it's work, isn't it? Okay. So yeah. You know, but I think a girl that can look good in just like little tracksuit, casual clothes, that does it for me. Yeah. Everyone's just gone, aww. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really? A very diplomatic answer. I'm being honest. Like if, I, if you come over to me and I can't see your skin through. No, the but cake, the question yeah, was too much. The question was tailored towards outside, the outside environment. So why would she be wearing pajamas? Okay. What? Team natural then? Yeah. On road. Yeah. If a girl was just wearing like a nice jeans and that like simple top. Yeah. Not too much makeup all day long. Instead Unsha- of a girl that's un- over Unshaved armpits. You said not too much makeup. <laughs> so you just say makeup. <laughs> oh, so, is it? I say so not too much. I yeah. actually meant, sorry, I meant, I meant no makeup. So I unsha- said no makeup. Un- unshaved armpits. Unshaved legs. Um, Moustache. Natural or make. It's makeup and weave or natural. I don't believe they're talking about unshaven <laughs> havens. <laughs> Nah, man, you can't have a bigger bush than me. You get me? I'm trimmed. I'm trimmed. Anyway. Uh, George Bush. Yeah. So team natural, man. Like, love yourself. I hate a lot of girls that are like, oh, I love myself. And I'm so, I'm like, and I'm looking at a picture of you and you look like a flipping, I don't know, like a CGI character because you've got, got so much makeup on. Listen, the girl's got a moustache and beard and she loves herself. I've got to respect that, man. Yeah, no, I respect that if that's your, if that's your thing. Yeah. yeah. But don't like try and cover the moustache and beard with makeup. Trim that. That's cool. Yeah. With hair, do what you want with your hair. Yeah. But with like slapping on loads of makeup. Nah, I don't like makeup. Not a fan. Oh, I'd so rather if, see imperfections. So if they trim it, it's different from putting makeup on it? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. the same thing though, isn't it? It's yeah. not the same thing. Because you're putting stuff on. If you're taking stuff off, that's cool. Okay. I don't like putting on that's not yours, isn't it? Like okay. if you put on weight, good, put on weight, isn't yeah. it? Like if you put on a if you put on a pair of underpants, yeah, that yeah. make your bottom look big, I'm not down with that. And makeup's like that to me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Padded bras, padded bums. No. It's like if you know what, when guys because yeah. they're already they're already out, you know, they're like pants for guys that hold in like your belly and get, and I'm like, no. Really? Yeah. No man, I find it just as stupid. But they're not sold in the high street. High street, like, nah, it's um, some online sales okay. thing. But I wouldn't be surprised if they mm. will be soon. And like yeah. Spanx, those knickers that girls wear as well that yeah. I supposedly hold stuff in. Mm. Don't hold. I'm like, don't hold it in. How about you work to hold it in? I, mean, I understand. There's some yeah. people that might have a kid and you can't hold that in. I'm like, cool, whatever. I expect it, but just wear it, man. <laughs> be natural. Be you. <laughs> work it. Work it. I have no qualm. If, if somebody's like, you know had a baby or they've lost a lot of weight real quickly and they've got a bit of extra skin. I'm cool with it. Yeah. It's natural. I respect yeah. that. Um, breast or bum, said brown sugar. Brum. I'm a brum. Yeah, I'm definitely a a, a, brum. a, a brum guy. Yeah. A brum brum. I like the brum. Yeah. Booty. Billy likes booty. He's a booty man. Uh, give or receive, said me- mediocre. <sighs> Bloody hell, these questions. Oh, Why are you looking at me for? I know I'm gonna say. Don't think my answer, Billy. Don't need you. Receive. 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 Regive. Give. It's it's safer to say give. Safer. Like, You're gonna get it, in trouble. No, it's just. <laughs> I'm just saying it's safer to say that. Uh. What are you gonna say? Receive. You're gonna be the receiver. <laughs> Depends what we're talking about. I think I'm a. I'm a. Are we're we only t- we're only talking about one thing. Could be more than one. Do you know in um, American football there's a position called wide receiver? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um give. I'm a give. I'm a give. The give. The give. But yeah, that was our quick digression to questions we didn't get back to. Anyway, um you ever gone somewhere and just logged into the free Wi Fi? All the time. Maybe you should read the T's and C's, because recently twenty two thousand people are now legally bound to a thousand hours of community service, what? which includes, but not limited to, cleaning toilets of festivals, scraping gum off the street, and manually relieving sewer blockages. That's cleaning a shitty toilet that's blocked with poo poo. Uh, 
Whether or not these people actually completed their smelly tasks is anyone's guess, but Manchester-based Wi-Fi company Purple Slotted, they put, they're called Purple, they slotted the cheeky terms into their T's and C's for two weeks to highlight the importance of reading T's and C's uh, people should check out when they're applying to free Wi-Fi. Yeah. They also offered a prize <laughs> if you raised it to them and only one person highlighted the cleaning contract to them. So out of 22,000 people, one person clocked it. Now, I'm going to be honest. Do I read contracts a lot? Yes. When it comes to f- free Wi-Fi when I'm at the hotel, I never fucking read it, bruv. I log straight into that shit. What would you do if you got stung with a thousand hours of community service? I'm still confused. Why are you getting in trouble for free Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> Not in trouble. They were just showing that people don't read T's and C's. Like, you know to read T's and C's? If by using this, you agree not to... Da, 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 da. And in some way it said, by using this, you agree to doing a thousand hours of community service. Oh. They got hit with the small print, baby. You know, like when people do work. We're talking about this before the show. Like, I've worked with some big fucking companies before. And... Isn't that entrapment? Um, no. Nah, really? entrapment's, entrapment's, entrapment's like... If you, if you hired something like that, a stipulation in... In the kind of contract like that, isn't that? It's just, tra- it's just taking the piss because they know what no one will read it. That's what it is. It's just being cheeky. That's a contract version of gluing a pound coin to the floor, isn't it? Because you know that everyone's going to reach for that pound coin, but yeah. hey, it's glued to the floor. Yeah, it's mean. It's mean. But I mean, maybe they got a point. Maybe we need to be reading T's and C's. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's there's a lot of T's and C's that people aren't reading. Out. They're like when you like log into your computer for the first time or get an yeah. upgrade of your <clears throat> security. Or get an upgrade of Facebook or an upgrade of your of your Mac computer. Yeah. There is terms and conditions. Yeah. I never read them, do you? No. There we go. There so we the go. next time you get your car insurance renewal and you just click yes, mm-hmm. you've really signed your soul Actually, over to Actually, I read that. The, I read that. You signed your soul over to the I, devil. I do read that because cause, cause I got, um, oh, I can't, it's not over yet, but I was, I'm in a situation legally, but mm-hmm. because I read my insurance, yeah. somebody tried it with me. And it's flopping them horrendously. Okay. Or 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 Lethal Bizzle, uh, an artist that we know in the UK, made like one of the most epic club songs and gram songs, Pow. Mm-hmm. He got everyone to sign a contract before they made, or when they're making the tune mm-hmm. and paid them all fairly <clears throat> and said that one of the artists tried to come to him with lawyers yeah, and, and, and was like, no, you owe me this, this, this money. And he just pulled out the contract and was like, I've read it. Mm-hmm. Blurp, blurp. Check out the contract, mm-hmm. and then that is it. So you gotta read your contracts, man. Yeah, trust me. You must read some. Co- there must be contracts that you read that like when you get bookings and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but you have got an agent for that, though. Yeah, you have got an agent. I'm trying to think of a lengthy contract because obviously, that, to hide something like that, the contract would have to be pretty lengthy to not to see something like you've got to do 100 hours community service. If it has to be like a anything above 10 pages. Really? To hide something like that. You're going to see that within yeah. the first, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Do you read contracts beyond that length? It depends. Like car insurance, yeah. House insurance, yeah. Business stuff, yeah. And I hate reading. Car insurance ones are pretty short these days. They're not as lengthy as they used to be. Yeah, they used to be fuckers. They used to be like the, the manual yeah. f- for like VCRs back in the day. Yeah. Like my first car insurance for my first ever car. Yeah, VCR manuals. My first ever car. The insurance was only covered me to drive the car three days a week no more and that's how i got my rate down because i was first driving was i only promised to drive the car three days a week okay in a time when there wasn't congestion charge Mm. so there weren't as many cameras on the road to check how many times a week i was driving Mm -hmm. or certain insurance you can't drive to work in yeah do you know what i mean you need Mm. special work insurance and people get like in a situation and the insurance doesn't cover them because of that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or yeah, little things like that. But yeah, I read, I read quite a lot of contracts, man. Don't be trying to get out there and fuck me with a contract now. People <laughs> going, yeah, baby. Yeah. Exactly. We'll, we'll see about that. But yeah, I like to read my contracts. Do man. you think this kind of, um, this style of penalizing people, um, through hidden clauses is going to work to change the, the awareness? He, here's what you need to understand and you the listener need to understand this as well is that we do this all the time so your phone has a microphone on it when you accept facebook's terms and conditions they can listen to whatever they want when your phone is active or not yeah so you could be talking about wanting to buy something and in the same way that if you google something online a couple of times like brand new agents of mayhem game 
you might be on another website and the advert pops up at the side. You know the cookies like yeah. that. <clears throat> they can do that verbally. Yeah. So you can be talking about stuff. What, yes, yes what, they can do that. I would argue. Yes, they can do that. Yes, they can do that. What I would argue with though is that Facebook's contract isn't as visible as other things on their site. So that is a little bit unfair to hide it something is, as is, important. It is. It, it's not it as is. because it would be on the front it page. No, of the no, site. I mean it is. You're right. Oh, I'm yeah. agreeing. I'm yeah. agreeing. Yeah, it yeah, is. So. It is. You wouldn't want it up front. I think with the whole Facebook microphone thing. That was so you can use, they can yes. use the microphone on when you make a phone call yeah. on Facebook Messenger. It says it. Did you read the terms and conditions for that? I just said you can use the microphone. Yeah. Did you read the terms and conditions that came with that? Oh, well, this is the part you say no, Billy. You say, can the fa- <laughs> it, you, you say yes to saying, can the Facebook app use your microphone, yeah? To make phone calls, yeah. Does it say it's, to it's, make phone calls? Did it say that? No, it says to allow permission. Yeah. To, for it to use the microphone. Yeah. Does it stipulate when, no, where and how? No, it doesn't. Got yeah. you with the small print, baby, or the lack of it. It's like saying, can I come around your house? You say, yeah. Mm. You turn up next week, Tuesday. Oh, I thought you meant today. No, you mm. said I can come around your house. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's what they get you with. Verbal cookies, baby. It's, it's not, do I sound like, cons- like a conspiracist? No, it's not. Conspiracist? Conspiracist. Not at all. I don't think Facebook are listening now, right now. It's no coincidence I was talking about buying my brother sunglasses for his birthday. And sunglasses popped up on my store this morning on Facebook and I didn't search sunglasses online because mm-hmm. I, I had the conversation and bought sunglasses in the same half an hour. But they came some sunglasses that were very similar to the brand that I was talking about with my brother. And I've not bought sunglasses or searched sunglasses for years came up on my Facebook. Well, store. it's funny you mentioned that because there's, 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 a, there's a current case actually now where Google is in a lot of trouble because one of their devices is being linked to the CIA. Yep. And the CIA 100%. and the CIA. So CIA have been using 100%. the um, Alexa mm-hmm. device mm-hmm. to listen to people mm-hmm. in their homes. Mm-hmm. Why not? If Alexa has the, such a complex set of microphones that it can pick up what a human is saying and understand what a man's human is saying from across the room while it's blaring out music, why can it not make a recording that you can listen back to at another point that we can say, oh. I think the more insidious it. part is that it, actually when you're switching Alexa off, it's yeah. not off. Yeah. yeah. Heavy classes though... Um eavesdropping though wouldn't it and, that's... and no one's ever done that before yeah. <laughs> there's never been a Levinson, a Levinson inquiry before you're right Billy you're yeah. right yeah. But it, where there's a will there's a way like, I, I think I've just kind of succumbed to the fact now that we're out there yeah do you know what I mean I'm, yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. I'm just like if there's a phone in the room yeah. it's being heard yeah. if I'm walking down the street there's probably a camera above me yeah. as long as I'm keeping my nose pretty clean and that's why I never, right. I never prescribed to the whole um, logging out of the internet not keeping yeah. certain pictures online you can't you can't, you can't avoid you surveillance. Can't, you can't. It's impossible. You can't. You can't. The, it, it, do you know what? Do you know what makes me laugh? Makes me chuckle. The people who kind of adopt that um, level of covertness, and then they go uh, abroad. Yeah. Not knowing that they they've got a chip in their yeah their fucking passport or yeah. a biometric scan, which has got their whole yeah. body measurements and yeah. facial recognition. Yeah. And somehow they're thinking they're being super duper savvy by yeah. logging out of the system as it were by exactly. not inputting not putting recent pictures on themselves on instagram yeah hey i've just got a a picture of a a, a goat as an avatar kind of thing. yeah and they're like oh we're safe the man can't get me yeah yeah <laughs> it's very interesting it's very interesting but yeah re- read your t's and c's man read your t's and c's i always say that Check or read your t's and c's but it's not going to change anything yeah I think that's <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 Definitely. Def- yeah, if you want the free Wi-Fi, just know you might be giving up some freeness yeah. of life. Uh, here's a question. Is it possible to beat it then? To to beat it? Yeah, to beat the system. To beat surveillance. I it doesn't seem like there is a way. What, what you'd have to do is you'd have to give birth to a child. <laughs> I've done that. Yeah. No, actually, I haven't. But and that child would I've, never... I've contributed to that, it. <laughs> that child. I was like, wow. Hard to kill an hour. We're trans friendly. Just saying, yeah, <laughs> yes, we're in. Yes, we're in. Yeah, welcome to welcome to Hard to Kill an Hour. Funke, funke, funke. No, so, a, a um, man did this week, so it's actually quite poignant. I, be, I believe a woman did. He was cl- Oh, he oh transgender. He, yes. We oh, have sorry. To, I'm just. Yes. I didn't know what you're talking about. I yeah. thought you were just genuinely talking in no, life. A woman, a, a trans man, a trans man was the first okay. man to give birth to a child this week. The first trans man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, That's cool. So a trans man gave birth to a child. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So it's quite a fact that in it. I don't know how that made a storyline. It's quite factual, but well done. Yeah. It is undisputed. Yeah. He is a trans man who has technically given birth to a child, so Wow. Where were we before this? Oh yeah. I have Wi-Fi. to I have to give one. I oh yeah, give, you're gonna have one. Yeah. Well, why not? 
Yeah. yeah so I think, you, I think no, you'd be quite a good pregnant to, to person. Be, to beat surveillance, you said I have to give birth to. Oh, so you'd no to give birth. Yeah, you'd have to be a trans man. No, you yeah. wouldn't. So to give to to do it now to get around it, you'd have to have a kid, one mm. of us. Yeah. Uh, and the kid would never have to log into the internet or give blood or be registered. That would still never Not work. Not possible, is it? Not that, possible. That still never work. Born at home, ne- and they couldn't go outside. What, no national security number? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Um, You'd have to not exist. Or the only way, other, other way around it is to be a secret agent. <laughs> then you can get into the system and fuck with it. But even yeah, secret I mean. agents are known. There's still a file on them. There's a file on James Bond. M has it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. So, so that's what you'd have to be. You'd have to, you'd have to be M. Yeah. Because M could delete the file. <laughs> so yeah, there's no way. There's no way away from it. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I'm out there. If you put my face into Google reverse image search, it's going to show up today. Yeah. And if it's not going to show up today, it's going to show up in the future. Yeah. Same with yours. Same with you, Billy. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and people can't avoid it. But it's quite interesting, though. Just read your, read your T's and C's, man. Yeah. Read your T's. There are people find all sorts of funny stuff on T's and C's. It's quite the only crazy. reason I pose that question is like, <clears throat> it's kind of fear mongering. If you pose a question, which um, there is no escape from it anyway. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. There is no escape anyway. So when people say. Wet- I think we should just bask in it, though. Yeah. Bask in it, like enjoy, like enjoy it. Someone always knows where I'm, knows where I'm at, isn't it? Mm. Maybe that makes me safer. <laughs> <laughs> um, apparently, according according to researchers, after getting mildly drunk, you remember stuff a lot better than if you weren't getting tipsy. As a man that doesn't drink, how how how's that? How would that affect your perception of alcohol? I have no opinion on this whatsoever. I have no empirical evidence to draw from whatsoever I'm not sure about this go on the science makes sense you're not sure about what I said but yeah the science oh does it what yeah. is the science on this so they say that alcohol blocks the learning of new information and therefore the brain has more resources to to lay down other recently learned information into long term memory so the theory is that the, the hippocampus their brain area that is really important in memory switches to consolidating memories because it can't, because you're drunk, it goes, a oh, man can't really handle new memories, isn't it? That's long, but it can go, oh, we can go, while you're drunk, we'll go and just clean up the area of your brain that's got long-term memories in it so or medium-term memories. You're saying when, you, when you're drunk, your memory gets better? The, of when you're drunk or, or mildly drunk, okay. the information, the, yeah, that so brand new information. We have to stress mildly drunk yeah. because when you're inebriated, you don't obviously remember anything. No, that's great though. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. In simpler terms, your brain is preventing making new memories in order to stay, to store away the recent ones. Interesting. Puzzling. Interesting. Interesting. Would that, and now as somebody who doesn't really like a drink, would that encourage you to have a drink if you were like, I've really got to study for a test tomorrow? My driving test. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, so I guess I could revise for an exam at 12 o'clock. Okay, it's 11 o'clock now. I get drunk and then I will retain all the information for that 12 o'clock period. Yeah, so for between 11 and 12, anything that hits you, any information that flies in your direction, you just say, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm ignoring that. Okay. But you don't take that on. There you go. Simples. I don't want to test this. I think you should test it, Funk. I think you should definitely test it. Speaking of testing, drone testing. So the UK are pushing forward with even more regulations of drones because a lot of people like to fly drones around there, don't they? And we spoke about this in another show saying if there's a certain weight, it's 350 grams now. If your drone's over that weight, you need to take a special awareness test. In fact, I was speaking to a cameraman the other day. You need to, they call it like a CC approve approve, uh, license. Oh, really? The cameraman have got to use it now? Yeah, if you're a professional cameraman and you have a drone, I suppose you've got the money yeah, yeah. and time and you kind of need to just be able to fly it because you go, you go to a festival like you've got your license. Yeah, here's my license. Uh, but they're hoping this will reduce the number of people flying their drones near airports as well as introducing geofencing to physically prevent them from trying, flying drones into airspace. I actually ke- so came to geofencing. We did some filming near a school in a big field mm-hmm. and I was like getting a camera to track me as I was walking. I was like, why the fuck isn't it tracking me any further mm. in this direction? Yeah. And it was like, sorry, we cannot film. Yeah, unregulated area because I was flying my drone next to a school and they thought I was trying to do like a you know drones on our Jimmy Savile yeah basically thought I was being a pedo but I think that's great though yeah Yeah, that's great Uh, compact drones though they're just as dangerous as the the bad ones Um, because a drone weighing 400 400 
pounds, Billy wrote here, but 400 grams, I believe that's meant to say, that can crack the windscreen of a helicopter. Um, so, and birds can crack windscreen of, heli- of helicopters and, 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 and planes as well, just like a seagull or even like a sparrow can fly into an engine. But I just think collectively, as humans, can we stop flying fucking drones in airports, please? Yeah. Just like, no. Just no, innit? Just no. How about a big old no? <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, uh, this has been How to Kill an Hour. I've been Marcus Bronzy. I've been Frank Butcher. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. <laughs>